Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the Bandai America Dragon Star Series Ultra Instinct Goku from Dragon Ball Super, obviously. And I know this isn't exactly a new release, they sent me this to review it so that I could also have it with another product that they wanted me to review, which you will see um, either before or after this video, depending on when you watch it, but it's kind of a cool review, so make sure you check for that. It'll be uploaded sometime around the same date as this one, depending on so you know where to look for it. All right, now this is basically your average Dragon Star figure, so there's not gonna be a lot to talk about, but we're gonna talk about it briefly anyway. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands to the top of his head, not counting his hair, about 14 and a half centimeters, including the hair, we're looking at closer to 16 and a half. That's gonna put him at just about, let's say five and three quarter inches, and let's say six and five eighths inches. And just so that you have an idea, I thought the Dragon Stars line was a little bit bigger than this. Maybe they've started to tone him down since I haven't reviewed any in a while. He's almost the same size as your figure. It's like almost exactly. I don't remember that being the case last time I looked at any of these, but for those of you who are curious, they are almost exactly the same height. And obviously some proportioning is different, but certainly they are close enough to intermix. Now, the Dragon Stars line is definitely a much less expensive line, and they are definitely geared more towards the casual collector or kids rather than the serious collector who wants to spend a lot of money and not bash around their toys in the bathtub. So my question, my day, daily question, my day of the question, I guess I could call it question of the day, which would be the, the right words to use, is if you're collecting figure arts, do you also collect Dragon Stars? That's all, easy question. I know a lot of you who watch these videos do collect the figure arts, so I think enough of you will be able to answer. And I guess if you only collect Dragon Stars, or if you primarily collect Dragon Stars, you can answer, do you collect figure arts? Do you spot fill? Do you collect them both? How do you do it? I guess just answer any of those types of questions. Okay, on to the review. From an aesthetic standpoint, for the price point, this thing's not too bad. The skin tone is all molded plastic, except for where it's painted on the legs. The painted spots are far enough away from the body that the slight difference in color and finish is not gonna be a real issue. Uh, I think that's perfectly acceptable. All of the molded plastic is the same color for the skin tone, same thing for the pants. I don't notice anything that stands out as being a different material or different color, so that's pretty good. I do wanna point out how shiny the hair is. Uh, some people are gonna like that, some people aren't, but it is very shiny silver, it is very metallic, it is about as nice a metallic paint job as you can do if you want the hair to be shiny. If you don't want it to be that shiny, well that's a personal preference, but it is very shiny. I don't know if I like that or not, I don't know, because it's obviously not technically shiny in the cartoon because it's just a flat drawing with colors that cannot actually be shiny but it is drawn to look kind of shiny, so I get it. I personally think it looks pretty cool. I like it. But I know a lot of you would just rather have gray, so you can decide for yourself. The paint job on the face, as you already saw, is acceptable. Nothing crazy, nothing particularly good, but it's not gonna destroy the figure. The sculpt is fine for the face. Sculpt for the body is really good, I think. They got the uh, Dragon Ball aesthetic done pretty well. He's definitely got a weird posture. He's poofing out his chest and has his back tucked in. So I get why they do that, but also that does impede posing. If you're trying to get any more natural posing done, this is gonna be somewhat difficult to achieve that. But otherwise it looks pretty good. The clothing sculpting is pretty clean. I mean, it looks like wrinkles and whatnot. The torn parts are a little bulky, but again, that's perfectly acceptable for a figure at this price point. The fact that they have a little bit dangling down here is a nice little touch. The boots are painted well enough. Yeah, I think for this type of figure, this is perfectly acceptable. Could more shading exist? Sure. Could it be a cleaner sculpt? Sure. But again, for this price point, it's perfectly good. So I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. No real issues. I think they could tighten up the face a little bit. Yeah clean up the line work, you know, where the, the skin tone is overlapping the pants, but even still, it's very solid. As far as accessories go, you only get a set of alternate hands, which are open hands to go with the fist hands that come on, on the pa in the package. Uh, it does come with the Build-A-Figure part, but those don't, I never count those as accessories because they're not. So yeah, basic accessories, five out of 10. It's acceptable for this price point, but certainly not anything special. Now, as far as the articulation goes, the head is on a ball peg. You're not gonna get a ton of range out of it, but you can definitely do the rotating that you need. Leaning side to side a little bit will work for just a little bit of attitude and up and down. Again, very little, but it'll be enough. Technically, I believe the neck's on a ball peg, but mine doesn't wanna move other than wiggling, so you can't, I can't count that. 
Shoulders have your standard ball hinge, full rotation that way, going up to the side. Better than horizontal, that's perfectly good. Can't really ask for more than that. Bicep swivel works, double jointed elbow works. These are very basic figures, but they are all very functional, or not all. Most of the stuff on here and most of the figures are pretty functional for the price point. Good elbows, no problem there. Ball hinge wrists afford as much range as you could ask for on a wrist like that, so that's fine. Torso articulation is very limited. Nothing above the waist and you just have a ball peg down here. The belt is a floating piece, but it's tight and hard. That's what she said. So you have to try to pose them on that ball peg, which you just can't do. It is a floating piece I mentioned, but also it doesn't actually float. It's keyed. So why did they do that? Maybe just to make sure it's facing in the right direction. Well, that's probably it. But also it should have just been a floating piece and a better ball peg. That ball peg's worthless other than it holds the body together. And the floating piece is worthless other than it didn't need to be painted. So, or it didn't, you didn't have a risk of paint down here. So not an ideal situation. This should have been truly floating and it should have allowed for much more range there. It wouldn't have cost them any more and it would have been much easier to do. Um, functionally so that's a bit of a bummer for the hips we do have the hinged ball pegs they drop a little bit is that helpful well we're about to find out when they're up you can't really pose them at all until they force down the hinge and even then you don't get very far splits it's only about 45 degrees and going forward sucks they go off to the side and at a pretty steep angle so that sucks you do get a thigh swivel in there which will be helpful for some posing but still fairly minimal Minimal utility there, thanks to the hips. As for the knees, it's a double jointed knee, which is terribly ugly. I'll talk about the feet in a second. Terribly ugly, but it is somewhat functional. You do get a little bit better than 90 degrees, but it's really ugly and still only a little bit better than 90 degrees. Again, small price point, not the most advanced figures. Ball pegs for the ankles, they work well enough. You're not gonna be able to do any crazy posing, but he will be able to stand in at least a few martial arts type poses with his feet flat on the ground, so that's okay. They pop off fairly easily. These are just PVC sockets, I believe. I don't think there's any palm in there. It looks like PVC. So you can just pop them right back on, even if they're a different material, you can just pop them right back on. So ultimately the articulation is acceptable at the price point. It's nothing compared to what the figure arts line has most of the time, but it's not supposed to be. This will get the job done, like I said, for kids or just really casual collectors who aren't trying to go into crazy photography with a, a cheap looking figure. So I think it'll get the job done. For the articulation, I'll give it a six. Too many problems. Most of it's functional and decent looking, but then the rest is pretty bad. So yeah, six. Final verdict on this guy is gonna be considering what it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be a competitor with figure arts. It's supposed to be a much lower end product. And I think for that, it's still really good. I'm gonna give it a seven for what it's supposed to be. A seven in this line is not equivalent to a seven in the figure arts line. I need you guys to understand that when I'm doing my rating system. It's a seven for what it's supposed to be, not a seven for what it could be if it was something entirely different. All right, let me know what you guys thought about the figure. Let me know what you thought about the review. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Give it a thumbs down if you didn't. I have new videos almost every single day, so you might want to subscribe if you haven't. You should come back. Thousands of videos already on the channel if you don't like any of the new stuff, so come back for that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.